Meet Auckland's deaf rugby team, the Northern Marlins. They're training for the annual Deaf Rugby Shield. They've only ever won the Shield twice in its 20-year history, but this year they reckon they've got some real talent. There's Orbeti, the old master. David, he scores the tries. Prop Sai Lucy, he'll pretty much drive through anything. And Talia, would you want to be tackled by him? I've always played on the wing. He's, he's already played before with no. hearing people and he was better on the wing. I didn't know enough about on techniques the, yeah. to be a forward. I mean, he's not very good in the middle. He's I there. want to be part uh, of the action. Because he's, he said he's fast, so he suits playing on the wing better. I have no fear he about tackling. I'm a big guy and that's what we train for. Because he likes bowling people uh, over. <laughs> what position? Uh -huh. Well, let's see, I've played first five, first number five, eight, and blanket. And, and, um, so uh, I think um, what, you sh what you should say is that you started in the back line. A while ago. <laughs> first five, full back. But slowly over the years, you've been moving forward. <laughs> and he's now number eight. <laughs> I'm a proud number eight. <laughs> so I started rugby almost six years ago because I was interested in, you know, mixing with my friends. You know, it was a fun game that I wanted to, to be involved in. And fitness as well. Um, you know, building out my skills. I started on the wing, then I changed to the centre, but I'm flexible in my position. Talia grew up in Tonga. He wasn't taught sign language. He learnt to lip read and charms everyone with his grin. Mele is from Tuvalu. They couldn't communicate when they met, but hey, that didn't stop the love. Thought I'd try, but my English isn't good, then, so I wrote enough to show Tonga which Mele understood. He, he wrote his name on my hand, because I asked him, what's your name? He didn't know how to say it, so he spelt it. Then I asked a friend, hey, who is that girl? And then he said, who's that girl? I was out having a few drinks with some of the boys. But he was out with friends and I was out with a group of my friends. Oh. And Nicola was there with her group and I could see her watching me. <laughs> and he's me. saying, she was watching me. I was a little bit drunk across the room. So Nicola came over and she tapped me on the shoulder. It was a nice surprise, yeah. man. And I walked over and introduced myself to him. I went home and then the next morning my friend texted me and said, do you remember that deaf man last night at the circus? And I said, yes, why? And my friend said, I think the man likes you. And I said, ha, ah, funny. <laughs> And that's how we met. <laughs> I said to a friend of mine, that's him, he's the one. And my friend said to me, who is he? I said, I don't know, I've never seen him before in my life. And so we stood there watching him for a while. And uh, she said, what's he doing? And I said, oh, I think he's signing. So she turned to me and Julie, she said, oh, you've got a bit of a problem, girlfriend, because <laughs> you can't sign. It was hard at the beginning because we both had to learn to sign together. Yeah, I, it was new for me. Yeah. yeah. You know, when I met you, I was like, oh my God, <laughs> he's hard work. <laughs> Silusi is 32, but he lives at home with his mum. Silusi wants to go flatting, but he needs a job first. And he has to convince his mum. She wants her boy to stay home. Because he always talked to me uh, sometimes. When you, when you die, I'm going to find somewhere to stay. I told him, this is your house, this is your home. Your sisters and brothers will look after you. And I don't know, he always tells me he wants to go find somewhere to stay. Tali is a bodybuilder, so he needs to watch what he eats, but he's not in training at the moment, so he's tucking in. Yes, you like to eat all the time. You yeah, I, I like to be satisfied. I don't like feeling hungry. He said he wants a good life. He wants to be full all the time. He doesn't like, he doesn't like being hungry. I make sure I'm always full. But I cook all the time. I get tired of cooking. Yeah, <laughs> I ask Mele nicely to cook for me. And when I'm feeling hungry, I ask her to cook again and again. <laughs> like, when you finish work, you come home, you're like, where's the food? Where's the food? So you need to put two cups, one cup of this into the air. So take it out and then roll it. <laughs> it's messy work. <laughs> Nicola is trying to teach Orbeti to bake, 
But when they first met, it was Opeti who had to do the teaching. Initially, when we first met, we were writing quite a lot, and um, Opeti was teaching me about 20 words a day when we first met. I'd write down the words I wanted to learn, and um, he'd teach me them, and I'd just practice them, and it probably took me about three months to learn enough sign to communicate properly. Oh, we got a book, another sign language book. It's a learn, eh? How do you say, and then what's the word? Then <laughs> practice, then read another word, then practice, you and me practice. What I um, sort of understand happens with lots and lots of deaf people and families that you sort of start to have like uh, a home sign. So you just kind of have like our own kind of style. I point and use facial expressions so Melly knows what I'm talking about. That's the easiest way. Say so Lucy's had a hard time finding a job, so he's seeking help. Luckily, the coach of the Northern Marlins is a disability employment consultant with Elevator. I know it's very hard for him to find a, a job, but he really needs to work. It's good for him because he's going to earn his own money to support him when he grows up. <laughs> David's married to Jamie. Their son Jaden is just starting to talk, but David's deaf, so he's teaching Jaden sign language to be sure they can communicate. Sign language is, is always easy for children to pick up. So his first language was sign language. Um, started about eight months um, signing, um, just different objects around the room. Um, and then eventually his, his English started to follow that. And as he gets older, his English is catching up with his sign language, but previous to that it was, you know, just a lot of signs, which was great because it meant that we were able to communicate with him a lot earlier than, than a lot of parents can, just because we don't want to be in the situation when he's older, where I'm having to interpret between those two and I'm kind of interfering in their relationship. They need to have their own relationship, so, you know, language is an integral part of that. Sai Lucy has come in for an interview at Elevator, the Disability Employment Agency. So, Sai Lucy, I've asked you to come in today. I just wanted to find out what you're interested in because I understand that you'd like a job. Yes. So if I asked you to think about what job interests you the most, what would you tell me? Insect collection. You know, catching them in the wild. Containing and cataloguing them and sending them in for analysis, then letting them go safely. So Lucy's determination to follow his passion for etymology may be one reason he's found it hard to find a job. Let's catch some butterflies along this path. <sighs> Talia is also doing what he loves best. Do you see any? I don't see them. Finding butterflies is almost as hard as finding a job. Thanks, Millie. I'll help with the dishes. Nick chops. He likes them. Talia can eat all this in one go. If you guys weren't here, all that would be gone. And that's one packet. So what I'll do now is collate all the information related to your job search. And if an opportunity comes up, I'll text you. Is that OK? Yep. I've been involved for 12 years with the, the Marlins team, with various roles from chairman through to coaching, manager, different roles. This year I'm the coach. I was a butcher for 25 years. 
my nephew was born deaf, so my wife and I actually went to night class to learn how to sign. Um, from there, you know, I met people in the deaf community, and one particular guy, the, the tutor at the time, uh, talked to me about the sign language interpreters class at uh, AUT. So I applied for that and now uh, become an interpreter. Two months out from the Nationals, the guys are training twice a week. Scott spends his evening driving the guys to and from training. Some of them live an hour out of town. The Easter tournament is um, an opportunity for deaf rugby players from throughout New Zealand to come together and compete with their peers, basically. So Lucy's been involved in deaf rugby since day one. He's been selected in the New Zealand team in the past, and he's really the rock for our team. He's a prop. Talia, the first time he actually played for the Marlins, he gave a bit of a fright to the Central and Southern boys when they actually saw him stripped down running onto the field. Opity is, is another one of the real rocks in the team. Been around for a long, long time. Retired last year, but he's come back this year, which is really good because he's a very valuable footballer. I've got some great skills and I'm experienced with the deaf oh, We do have good skills, yes. Great skills, yes. Yes, but we're just a little bit older now. A little bit more like old crab. Just back and say our other home. We come here just about every day. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. We always come here. We should actually just live here. Hey, we should sleep over here. Yes. And this is why we have no money, because we're always at Pack and Save. This year's strategy was, okay. I'm just going along to help the coach. I said I'll just play touch. This year you told me you were just going to help the coach. And then I noticed about three weeks later a new pair of boots and he's actually playing and... <laughs> this is what Talia could eat in one day if he was really, really hungry. Or if he was just being a pig, really. That's a lot. It's about 12 for a packet, so one, two, three, four, maybe 50. This is just 50 bucks worth of food. This is not even including anything else, this is just meat. Talia hopes to medal at the National Bodybuilding Champs. But he's been stuffing his face with lamb chops and he's packed on the pounds. His trainer, Sergit, is not impressed. This is where he's going to carry most of it, as we know. Talia's got two months to get ripped. It's about five, so it's quite... That's his chops, that's what's happening. <laughs> it's her fault. <laughs> it's you ate it. No, it's Melin. <laughs> She's in charge. <laughs> yeah. And this competition's in April, yeah. so First, we're going to start yeah. really going hard now. So they've been so eating so. and sticking to the plan mm. that I've given him. So Lucy's dream job of catching insects will have to wait. Scott has arranged a trial for him at a lighting factory. Oh. It's all in the family as one of the four men is Orpeti, who plays with Sai Lucy on the Northern Marlins rugby team. But he still has to prove himself on the job. So you lay them like that. So actually overlapping. Yep, that's right. And place them in here and then join them. Okay. Now remember to put the sleeve on. You put a plastic sleeve over the wires. Oh. Good. Right, we'll see you tomorrow at training, eh? Yep. Cheers, bro. See you there. Bye. It's not bug catching, but it's a job. <laughs> Scott's called them to a training camp to make sure they're all clear on the rules. Diff rugby is the same as in as rugby. It's the same rules apply, um, it's the same globally. The, the difference with um, the guys that are deaf that are playing the game, uh, they just need to be aware, um, first they need to understand the referee 
the signs they use when there's a breakdown or an infringement in the game. Fine. So here's the advantage line. It's very important that you stay behind it at all times. So back, get back, get back, get back. So the point of this exercise is that we blow over the player on the ground so that we continue to advance over the advantage line. Being deaf, they can't um, hear the whistle necessarily or hear a referee who's speaking. Normally if there is an infringement, um, we encourage them to carry on until someone stops them. Yeah. Okay, everyone will have a turn at this exercise. If there's a breakdown in play at all, what they generally do is as the players become aware that the referee needs play to stop, they'll just tap each other and, and even the opposition, just give them a tap to let them know that play has stopped. David's wife is going out for the day. Mum's off to work. Dad's in charge of keeping little Jaden entertained and out of trouble. I'll come back and see you later. Bye. Bye, Mummy. Come on. Go down the slide. Two-year-old Jaden has full hearing. Sit on the top. He's only just starting to talk, but he's already bilingual. David's been teaching Jaden sign language from day one. OK. One. Two, three, go, go. Go. One particular day I ran across Tali. He approached me for a, a job as a labourer and we employed him. And from there it's just gone from uh, strength to strength. Came from Tonga, not speaking a word of English. Couldn't uh, do any sign language what sign language he knew didn't correlate with New Zealand sign language. So he had to start again and learn English and New Zealand sign language. Um, and again, he also had to learn uh, stopping and painting and the ability to become a carpenter. I just read his lips and he reads mine. And then we use a little bit of sign language and um, a lot of pointing. It does work. Yeah, all of that. I can yeah. finish yeah. all of all that. Good. Yeah, that's fine. fine. How much more paint do you need to paint? The pole. Do you want to? Yeah. Do you want to take for you um, one more? One more tin. I've used two. three so yeah. far. So two. Yeah. So three more. Three more. Okay. Three more. Yep. Or Petty and Nicola are off camping. Yep. 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 Yes. Yes. On the mark. All good. Tali is a month into training. He needs to be 100 kgs of lean muscle. Has he done enough? Personal trainer Sajit is the judge of that. Yeah, it's pretty hard on him, that one, eh? Yeah, um, how's his, his abs doing okay? Um, that's actually way better. It's way better. Oh, it's amazing. But the changing to the new diet, well, I wasn't so sure about it at first. The menu is quite boring. I'd never been camping before. He'd never really camped. We went to, yeah. where is that place beginning with W? Before he met me, really. <laughs> we always seem to be buying new camping gear. <laughs> I always want to make sure it's going to be done and put together right. Petty just gives it a crack, which I don't think that's anything to do with being deaf. I think that's just to do with being male. I think, um, start at the at front. At the front? Okay. The you think there's three blue All right. in the cross pods, but you need to peg the side first. I was asking about all these words, and there were no signs for them, or the signs were the same as something else. And I realised that in the English language, we have all these words that we use that actually don't mean anything. So we use superlatives all the time, or we just yep. use five different words to say the same thing. I was asking for words, and Petey was saying, oh, I've I've shown you that word, it's this, and I'm like, oh, that's just the same cool. word. That should hold, yeah, that should hold it enough. Yep. Okay. 
For months, Tali has been working on his physique. <laughs> While Mel has been cooking up a storm, feeding him every couple of hours, so his body is perfectly honed for this day. Thank you, Mel. You, you've been a great help with buying all the food and has helped my bodybuilding. Five o'clock in the morning, when you get up, you make the breakfast, cook the chicken, the beef, whatever, pack my lunch ready for me to go work. And you do all of this all the time. So thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. <laughs> thank you. Mel is in charge of making sure every muscle looks perfect. I need more on. Can you, can you get some more and I'll pay you back? We need to buy one more of those. Well, Nicola likes to read the manual and give me step-by-step -step instructions, but I ignore her. I know what I'm doing. That's not how it goes, but he actually doesn't hear me, so I've given up now. <laughs> Got it? Got it? Now you've made my... <laughs> He can't hear anything, so Talia is able to stay completely focused as he prepares to take his turn on stage. <laughs> it didn't take me too long to realise that um, kind of when you're when you're a hearing person and you get frustrated, you get kind of angry or frustrated, that you use tone and you use sound. So if you can imagine as like a hearing person, kind of what you would look like when you're kind of angry, frustrated, and screaming, but without sound, like you actually just look really stupid. So, so, <laughs> like, you know, it's actually not very effective. Raising your tone is actually not an effective way to communicate. The judges call out which pose to strike. Talia has to take his cue from the other men, but keep his cool. He didn't claim the prize today, but He'll be back. <laughs> Finally, the first day of the National Deaf Rugby Tournament. The Marlins' opposition are the Central Stags from the Lower North Island. And last year's champs, the Southern Rams. Well, this is my last year. Yeah, that's right. This yep. is my last then year. I'm retiring. Yeah, yeah he's becoming retiring. old man. He can't keep going. The bases, tackle, support, tackle, support, run, play through, back up. Boom, boom. Wings cover. Deaf rugby players listen with their eyes. It's rugby union rules. The ref still uses a whistle and the normal hand signals. But sometimes it takes a bit to realise play has stopped. Referee actually blew, his, blew the whistle and put his hand up and I think they thought it was a try. Things are looking good. It's 5-3 to the Marlins. It 
was all going the Marlins' way in the second half, but then the Southern Rams scored a try and the tide turned. Things didn't go well after that. The Marlins lost. They just lost. They were leading, and then about 10 minutes before the end, they lost. Day two of the tournament, and yesterday's results are still fresh on their mind. This time, there's been a few changes. Tali is on the field, and Orbeti's back in the position he knows best, second 5-8. Sailusi crashes over the line, scoring early points. Half time, and they're well ahead. They're looking like they've got a little bit more energy, so maybe they had a bit of sugar with breakfast or something. Second half, game on. The Marlins are ready to pounce on any opportunity. In the end, it was a convincing victory with the Marlins beating Central 31-7. The Marlins now need Central to beat Southern, but the Southern Rams make quick work of the Stags and the Shields going south again. Oh, I'm really happy, eh? Yesterday's game against Central, we thrashed them, and that was really cool. It felt awesome. He officially retired about two or three years ago. I think maybe you're just a little bit too old now. <laughs> Yeah, I got some good feedback from the other guys about my performance. So I learned some new skills and I'm looking forward to being part of the action next year. I love rugby. I know, you love it. You love rugby. <laughs>